Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part 27 of my Java video tutorial series. Today, I'm going to cover one of the last components in Java Swing, and it is called a tree. And you can see one here. And if you can't see this, view it full screen. And I'm going to show you how to set up this guy in this program and go through all kinds of other little neat things we can do with it. Pop up all kinds of information about everything contained inside of here. And before we leave, these are called nodes, each one of these. And this would be the root node because it holds all the other nodes and this is the parent node for taxes.exl in this example. And then docs, as well as work applications and games, are all considered siblings. So hopefully that makes sense. Now let's just jump right into the code here. And there's a link to all this code underneath of the video. You should definitely check it out because it's heavily commented. We need to get a couple things here, though, in regards to libraries. First thing I'm going to be able to pull in here is enumeration, which is a library that allows me to work with enumerations, which are just like items. We need to be able to pull in that library so we can sort through all of those whenever they are returned by a method later on in the tutorial. If that didn't make sense. Don't worry about it. You'll learn more. And of course, we have to bring in the tree library so we can use that properly. And let's just scroll down here and make a couple other different objects inside of this guy. Now a tree, as you saw before, contains nodes that contain other nodes. And how you create them is you just type in jtree. And I'm just going to call this the tree. And there you are. I just created a jtree. Now if a node holds other nodes, it is called a parent node. I want to make sure you understand that. And the nodes inside of a parent are called children nodes. And the nodes on the same level are called siblings. Okay. Now I don't know why most people don't ever cover trees because they're kind of useful. But if you want to create a different node or a whole bunch of different nodes, you would type in default mutable tree node. And that is how you create nodes. And I'm going to type in work and I'm going to type in games and I'm going to type in emails so that I can show you a whole bunch of different things in regards to these guys. So let's scroll this up. And then to create our root node, I'm just going to copy this guy right here. I'm down here, type that in. And I'm going to call our root node file system because one of the things you could do with a tree is to model out the file system inside of a nice interface. And then just paste that inside of there. And then I have to give this root node a name, text that's going to show up on the screen. And I'm going to call it C drive. I like that. And there you are. Just created our root node. Everything else is going to go inside of that. And then here's public static void main. There it is. You know all about that. Here's where we're creating our frame. Here's where we're positioning our frame in the center of the window. This is going to handle closing whenever the close event's triggered. Name of my frame. This creates the J panel that goes in the frame. Here we create a button. Here's where we add a listener for the button that is going to automatically fire this method called listen for button anytime an action is performed on the button. Here we add that listener to the button and here we add the button to the panel and now we start messing around with trees which is why we're here all right now we're going to create the tree which we previously sort of defined but we didn't actually create it and how you create it is you pass it the root node so file system and there it is now you're ready to rock I think that's a little bit bizarre and something you're probably going to actually just copy and paste this guy. But if we want to make it so that the user can only select one object in a tree at a time, we're going to type in get selection model. And of course, don't try to remember this way too much to remember. Set selection mode and then tree selection model and then single tree selection. I have no idea why you have to go through all of that just to make a tree only have one selectable node at a time, but that's what you have to go through again. That's why the code's provided, so you can just copy and paste that. Now, if you would want to only show, let's say, eight nodes at a time, just type in set visible row count and then put eight in there for that situation. Of course, you can change that and show as many as you want. And now I'm going to add an item to my tree and I'm going to add my documents, my work node and my games node. But first off, we're going to add documents here. And how you add a node is to call add a file, which I'm going to show you here in a second exactly what that method does. Literally a couple seconds because I'm going to create this guy. And I'm going to go file system. And what's file system? That is the root node. Very important to remember that because that's going to position docs underneath of that guy. So we have to create add a file. And that's what I'm going to do right down here. So let's just scroll down way down here and let's create that file. I'm doing all this in a separate method because I want to keep this all separated. And you just type in default mutable tree node, which is the file type for any type of tree node. I know that is extremely long, but 
play around with it for a while and you'll get it. And then I'm gonna pass a string that's gonna be the file name that's gonna represent the node. It's gonna be the name for the node. Don't get all hung up on exactly what we're doing here. And then we're just gonna type this in here. And this is going, I'm gonna name this parent folder because what this is, is we're passing the name of the new node we wanna create and the node that it is going to be held in. That's all, don't get too confused about that. We're just saying, hey, here's a new node we wanna create. This is the name and this is what the parent that we want to stick it inside of. That's all. Sounds way more complicated than it really is. Well, then we're just gonna come down here again and we're gonna create a new node Node, and you just type that in there and I'm gonna call it new file temporarily equals new and then that and then what we're gonna do is type in file name which is gonna be the name for our node and then we're gonna go parent folder which is the node here and then go add new file and what we're doing here again is saying okay parent folder which is gonna be the parent node that's gonna contain our new node we're gonna create. We're gonna call that parent node called parent folder. We're gonna call the method called add and we're gonna add this new node into it. If that doesn't make 100% sense, just leave a question below. Okay, so we've created our new node and we've told Java in which parent node it should be held and then we need to return it. So that's all this did, created all that stuff. Let's scroll back up here. And this is where we called add a file, which we just created there. So let's add a couple other different things to the documents node or documents folder, if you want to consider it that in this situation. Well, what are we going to do? We're going to go add a file and we're going to make additional calls to that guy to create additional new nodes. And the only reason why we had to create the documents part up here is because it will become a parent node. Otherwise, if we're just going to throw regular files in there, like let's say we want to create a new node called taxes.exl, and we want to throw it into the parent node name documents. And that's all we need to do in this situation. Let's say we want to add a couple more to this. Let's say we want to add story.txt, for example. Story.txt. Now let's say we want to add a child node inside of documents, but we expect it to hold additional information. What are we going to do in that situation? Well, in that situation we gotta go emails and go add a file just like that and then we're gonna give it the name emails to make it look like it's a file but we're still gonna stick it into the documents parent node and then just to throw another different guy in here drop down inside of there go add a file and let's say uh, schedule.txt and we're adding that to documents but you might say to yourself well how do I go and add child elements to my new emails node that I created well, that's simple same exact thing except you're gonna change this to emails right like that and then let's just say that this is called uh, I don't know call Bob is the name of this email you saved and then we can come in here and create all kinds of other different things. So let's just select this right here. Real easy to create additional ones of these guys. Just paste that in there. Like I said before, let's say we have one called work. And if you can't quite grasp this, scroll back to the beginning of the video and look at exactly what this looks like when it's done. And I'm going to name this node work applications. And it's part of the file system, so we're going to leave it that way. And then I'm going to grab this right here, copy and paste that inside of there and paste that inside of there because these are going to be child elements. And then let's say we want this to be spreadsheet.exe. And then let's say we want this one to be word processor.exe. And then of course we could also create our games node that's going to also have child elements inside of it. And we just go like this. And then in this situation, we're going to go games is the name for this. And then we're going to give it a title games. And it's going to go with the parent file system. No problem. And then let's say we got uh, space invaders. And this one is going to be Pac-Man, I don't know. All right, so we created all these different guys. So what would be kind of nice? Well, if you remember up here, we said, well, we only want to show eight of these at a time with this guy right here, set visible row count. So we better go and throw this whole entire tree into a scroll box or a J scroll pane. So that's what I'm going to do. And we just go J scroll pane, scroll box is equal to new. No reason to type that out again. Paste that there. And then what's it going to do? We're going to put our tree inside of there. The only problem is, like we used the scroll box before, the dimensions are going to be all messed up. Well, that's why we have our dimension library right here, because that's going to allow us to come in here and size this scroll box that is going to contain my tree. And we'll just go dimension. I'm going to say D is equal to scroll box. And then I'm going to say get 
preferred size. And that's going to get me my height and width for that scroll box right there. And then we got to make some changes to it. I'm going to say that I want my width for my scroll box to be 200 because that works. And I'm going to say scroll box dot set preferred size is equal to my new D that I just created here. And then what do I need to do? Well, I need to go to the panel dot add scroll box. And that adds the scroll box to this guy. And if we execute this, you can see that everything popped up inside of here. And we can go and click on all these different things, but if we hit the button, nothing's going to happen. So I'm going to show you a couple other different ways to access this different information inside of this tree. We're just going to use this listener down here and execute different things based off of what we're able to pull back. So let's say, for example, we wanted to be able to get whatever node was selected. That's kind of useful. So let's just go object, tree object, temporary holding cell. And I'm going to say the tree dot get last selected. And I'm just going to click on this here to save myself from typing it in. Path component and then put that down there. So this is going to return an object but it is going to need to be cast into a default mutable tree node. And that's just the long name for what? Every node. Let's just scroll up here to this guy right here, copy it. And we're gonna cast this basic object into what something we can actually use. And I'm gonna call this the file is equal to, and this is how we cast, of course. Covered that previously a bunch of times. And then we just say tree object which it doesn't even realize it's that, it just thinks it's an object. So then what do we want to do? Well, we want to take that node and we want to cast it into a string so that we can shoot it on the screen and it makes sense. So we're going to go the file get user object like that. And then we're going to take output string and we're going to throw the information we get from that. We're going to shorthand add to what was originally added when this string was set up. And in this situation, we're going to go the selected node. And then we're just going to this tree node, which is this guy right here. It's just a string that represents the node, name of the node anyway. And go like this, throw a new line in there so it looks pretty. I'm going to be doing a lot of the same sort of stuff here. And let's say that we also wanted to add the number of children and, and output that onto the screen. So let's just say number of children for the selected node. In this situation, we're going to go the file and go get child count. That's going to return the number of children that are stored in that guy right there. We could also find out the number of siblings, and it's almost identical to this guy because it would make sense for it to be. So let's go like this, number of, and then we're typing siblings. And we're going to go get sibling count instead of child count. That's going to return that. Bounce down here. Let's say we wanted to get the parent of the node. Parent, like that. And then go the file, which is the node we're playing with here. And we're just going to say get parent. And that's going to output that to screen. We could also say uh, get the next node. And there's tons of these methods, but I'm sort of like going through every one of them. So we'll say next node. And here it's just going to be get next node. And of course, get previous, you probably guessed it, is almost identical. Previous, get previous node. There's a whole bunch of different methods to play around with that. Well, and let's say we want to go and get all of the children of whatever the selected node is. Now well, we're going to go paste inside of here. And in this situation, we're going to give ourselves some space. I'm going to call this children of node, like that. Throw in another new line. Keep this a little bit more simple than normal. And this is a little bit harder. And this is also where we're going to be using what's called the enumeration. What we're going to do here is we're going to go for enumeration. And we're going to enum value is equal to the file. And we're going to call a method called children. And of course, put that period inside of there. And what children does while we're doing all this enumeration stuff is children returns an enumeration that contains all of the children. And what we're setting up here is going to continue pulling these ch children values out until no children values any longer exist. It's kind of a goofy thing here. Probably something would be good to play around with. Just copying and pasting the code. We're going to call has more elements. And this guy is going to decide if the for loop continues to execute. That's all it's going to do. And then we're going to put our little curly brackets here. And then we're going to add to our output string again. And in this situation, we're going to go enumeration value dot next element and what next element does is it returns the next element in the list for this for loop so it's going to continue to spit out these enumerations until none of them exist or until they you reach the limit so that guy's going to spit out all the children 
the other thing I can think of, uh, I mean, there's a whole bunch of methods, but it's going to depend upon what you actually would want to use. Let's say that you wanted the path, meaning all the parents that lead up to the actual node itself. Let's say we want a new line and say path from root, for example. Cut that off there. And if you want to get all these guys, well, I got a method for you, and it's going to return an array of tree nodes. And I'm going to call it path nodes. And how you get it is you call the file. And you go get path is the method you call. And this guy returns an array of tree nodes. So then what you want to do is be able to cycle through all of these tree nodes and output them to screen. So we're going to go for, and we're going to go tree node. I'm going to give it a temporary name of individual nodes. And then we're going to throw path nodes in there. And it's going to allow us to cycle through all those different guys. And then come up here and grab this guy. Copy, paste, and then we're going to go copy this guy right here. Paste that inside of there. Get rid of that E so we don't have a confusion here. And that's going to output all of those different guys. And then we have everything else here. Basically, it is all right. And there it is. You can see everything showing up here. And if I select Docs, for example, and hit Get Answer, you're going to see all the different information pop out here that we expected to show on the screen. Leave any questions or comments below. Otherwise, till next time.